Hi, this one has been a long time coming. This is the JX6 review. This is a bark river knife designed by uh, Chris Tanner, who is a um, contemporary of mine, uh, a YouTuber, and he has got to this point, I believe, seven different designs made by various companies, all with various tasks in mind. This is done as sort of the EDC camp uh, belt knife that um, you really could use for just about anything you'd put your pocket knife in and then a fair few of the jobs that you'd use a fixed blade for as well. So um, let's take it down to the tabletop. Uh, a fair bit's happened with this knife. I'll um, go through, I guess, uh, to cut uh, to people if this is your first video of mine you're seeing. Uh, I ordered this exact knife um, from uh, one of the vendors, uh, DLT. Uh, this is marked CPM154 and it was also marked out on the site. Um, I ordered it mainly because I like Bark River Knives, um, I like uh, Chris Tanner's designs and um, I wanted to try 154 as a steel for my steel tests that I do if you haven't seen on this channel I do lots of steel tests, got a huge list of them, CPM 154 was and still is one of the ones that I needed to test. The reason I say it still is is because this one ended up being um, A2 steel. It is la labeled CPM 154 but it's A2. Uh, the reason I discovered that was because I did a rust test on this and a whole bunch of other steels and this was the rustiest of, rustiest of all of them by far, even rustier than some of the other carbon steels. So that was a surprise to me. There's a bit of toing and froing. Um, no bad vibes, I'll put that out there first of all. Not even from um, the Bark River uh, folk. Uh, it was just one of those things, shit, let's fix it. And so that was the, um, you know, that's about as, as good as you could hope when something like that happens. So it was good um, that that all happened, but you know, it was bad that, you know, it was CPM 154. So this is in fact A2 steel. So, um, I guess the way I look at it, I've reflected on it, I'm never particularly critical because you know what, I don't go to work and do a perfect job every single day either, um, and not every th all of my output that I do on YouTube for example is perfect, so I don't expect anyone else to be perfect either. So that's the most, um, that's sort of the outlook that I've had really from the start, but then another way I sort of look at it is, is say, say you went and you ordered a, um, say you went to a really good coffee shop and you ordered a, uh, a cappuccino and it's the cappuccino that you were expecting to get but then you, you sip it and it's actually a latte and even though it's still a good latte it's not the cappuccino that you asked for so you can do two things you can make a fuss and you can go back and you can say I wanted a cappuccino you idiot uh, you've given me a latte what a dumb mistake you're the worst uh, or you can just say you know what the latte is just fine and I drink lattes as well all the time and I'm completely happy with them too I know I'm using an abstract example um, but yeah, really, it's just another thing, like A2 is a steel that I like, and in the testing that I did with this one, I thought it was CPM 154, it did great as well. So that's, that, that's the point with this knife so far. I ended up getting another one sent to me for free, most likely because I do this, um, and, and you know, it, it, of course it's a harm reduction, damage control sort of thing, absolutely. I gave that knife away because I don't want free stuff. I do prefer just to be treated like a normal consumer. Um, so I gave that knife away to um, Jeremy Jack, um, Farm Boy Jack, and uh, he did a review on it, and that was good. So, best of a bad situation. Anyway, let's get to the review. I'm already three and a half minutes in. Alrighty, so this will be um, this is the tabletop section of the knife. However, you'll be seeing more predominantly uh, action shots of this blade. But this is the blade um, on the table, so to speak. It is a um, a very small sort of fixed blade knife that comes in a very wearable leather sheath. I'll put the specs on it up now. As well as the price and some varieties you can get uh, regarding this knife now. Being a Bark River knife, there's all sorts of handle and steel combinations that you can get. Uh, the knife comes with a saber convex grind, so as in it is flat and then there is a convex, so it is not a full convex. I guess you could call it a saber vex, I don't know. Um, and it is an excellent slicer. I'm going to go into what I like most about this knife first. So, the thing I like most about it is that it's similar to me to my much loved Spidey Chef pocket knife. So let's get that bad boy out now. Very similar to the Spidey Chef in that I like when a knife gives my fingers clearance so I can use the knife in various ways. So the Spidey Chef here, it, this even does it a little bit better, but your fingers have less time colliding with the things you're cutting. So it's a really good point of the knife and it is, as you can see, a sort of very comparably sized knife as well. It's a little bit thicker. 
but it's um, you know obviously got that sort of strength that a fixed blade he has, whilst sort of taking away some of the discretion that a, that a folding knife has. So there you go. So I really do like the overall design. It sort of sings of sings the Nesmuk song a little bit as well, um, like those uh, little uh, sort of small sort of game knives that Nesmuk would have espoused carrying. Also has uh, shades of the Canadian belt knife as well. Um, the Canadian belt knife is a knife that you would carry sort of horizontal on the front of your belt. Uh, this one here comes in this leather sheath here, which is um, a very very nice little leather sheath indeed. Uh, so, um, let's talk about the blade. So the blade in this one is made of A2 steel. It does also come in CPM 154 and the one that I got sent was definitely in CPM 154 because I tested it and it did not rust. CPM 154 is a stainless steel, most likely with slightly lesser edge retention than A2. I, I feel that might be the case. I have no nothing to quantify that with, but just from other general anecdotal evidence, which I know is of limited value, but um, CPM 154 seems to last a little bit longer than uh, 154 CM, about the same realm as S30V in terms of edge retention, whilst being a much tougher steel. So it's still an excellent steel. A2 though, especially when heat treated by people who know it, uh, like LT Wright or like Bark River, is one of the best carbon steels or tall steels that you can get. Without, without a doubt. It's really, really tough, holds an edge for a great long time. This one held an edge almost as long as the 3V steel on the Bark River Bravo 1 when cutting rope. So there you go. It's very, very impressive stuff. Uh, the handle, I like the handle a lot. Uh, I like it mainly because it is blue. <laughs> I, uh, I chose blue because, you know, I don't have many blue knives and it reminds me of the blue Delica that I used to rock around with all the time. Um, really, really good, nice, vivid G10 color. This is smooth, polished G10, and then it's got a red sort of micata or G10 liner in there as well. So I really, really like the handle. I like the appearance of the knife overall. I reckon it's an excellent looking knife. Uh, the blade's usability is top notch. You can use this blade for anything. A tall, thin convex grind is strong and yet slicey as it does your food chores with no problems at all. The whole knife and blade design is definitely geared towards food preparation. But then of course you can do really good roll cuts on wood as well with this sort of extensive belly here. Still has enough flat or flattish area to do some push cutting on your wood if you're thinking of doing feather sticks. Uh, it is a really really versatile little blade without a doubt. Um, and it's strong too. So I took this and I did battening with it which is dumb. Like big you shouldn't ever batten anything that's longer than your blade and I got punished for doing so. So what I did was I took it out and battened a few times and after a day or so when I actually got it back and I was trying to put it back in the sheath because um, I sort of when I test my knives I have some sort of sitting around my yard the kids will need something I'll go off and do something and I'll do that over a course of a few days you'll often notice I do random costume changes in my videos it's generally because I've sort of filled a bit here and a bit there anyway when I went to pack this knife up and put it back in its sheath I noticed that it snagged and it had a slight bend in the tip and that is from battening wood that's too wide for it and hitting the tip with a stick from an angle and of course no fault of the knife the tip bent, it didn't chip off or break, it just bent. And so then I had to get on my Tormek and just grind the tip off just a little tiny bit. And it's got a sharp tip here again. It's um, yeah, definitely capable of piercing all that sort of stuff and no problems at all. But yeah, just happened and it was a bit of a bummer, but completely my fault. But overall the knife has certainly got integrity. It's full tang, it's A2. It's not gonna do you any problems there at all. Um, I like the sheath carry a whole lot. This is a really nice sheath. Uh, one thing I really didn't like about the Bravo one was its leather sheath. It was too fiddly, had straps where I didn't want there to be straps. This one is just nice and deep and it has a magnet at the bottom to aid in retention. So the magnet at the bottom is going to be your um, your real sort of anchor if you do find yourself jumping around a bit or I mean the knife sits deep in it anyway but if you find yourself jumping around the anchor is really going to be what holds onto it. Sorry the magnet. Real nice, strong, rare earth magnet at the bottom. So great, great idea from Bark River. I also just love the white stitching and the sort of the lighter leather. I think it looks really, really cool too. 
So really happy with um, the sheath overall. Another thing you can do with the sheath is that while it is fine to carry vertically, uh, you can angle this because I find vertically pokes me in the side just a little bit. Um, certainly doesn't isn't a drop sheath. I find I like to carry this um, on my support side with a slight angle to it, which you can get by turning the sheath over and threading your belt through just one of the straps, which is still plenty strong, unless you're gonna have someone grabbing onto it and actually trying to pull it off. Um, not gonna be a problem at all. So that's the way I really have enjoyed carrying this. And I have used it as an EDC fixed blade. It's Australia, so you're not really gonna EDC a fixed blade out in public anywhere, but when I've been to my house, private property, out camping, that sort of stuff, it's done really, really well. It's a light little user, the sheath is low profile, and especially when it's on my support side there, it doesn't get in the way of anything else in my pocket. So really, really well done sheath, and I've enjoyed carrying it a lot. You know what, I've had a fair few EDC fixed blades, neck knives, all that sort of thing. This is the first and only one that I've actually really liked. Like when I've put it down or when I've got rid of it, um, all the other ones, I haven't missed them at all. Whereas this one, I think it's gonna stick around. Even given the snafus and the weirdnesses that have happened with it, it's just an excellent little performer. It slices and cuts and does all the jobs just fine. Really, really happy with my JX6. Uh, let's talk about what was weaker about the knife. So, uh, two main things is, uh, the first, invariably, can't get around to elephant in the room is the steel mislabeling. That sucks. Um, but as I said, it's a you know, if it had, this had turned out to be 440A, yeah, for sure, that would have sucked ass. But being A2, one of the best carbon steels going, um, is certainly not a complete kick in the dick. It's um, uh, you know 154cm. It should you should get what it says in the box, absolutely. But they were more than happy to write it, and the next one was. So they are definitely selling them in 154cm. I think I was just unlucky, and I think I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. You can read into it more or less if you want, but I find life's just a lot easier if you try and hope the best and think the best of people unless you really have to otherwise. So um, that's kind of the approach I've gone with. The second thing is there's just a couple of little minor fit and finish dings. I'll run some photos of them up because you know what? They are kind of hard to see. The only reason I bring them up is this is an expensive knife. So um, about 180 US dollars. So really to get it into Australia, it's gonna be, end up being about 260 to 270 bucks with postage. Um, DLT are an excellent company to deal with though in terms of getting stuff out shipped to you quickly. Even in Australia, I can totally vouch for them. Um, people always say, oh, I've got to find one in Australia. I'll say no. No, DLT is fine. Shipping sucks. We all hate paying shipping, but that's we. There's great reasons to live in Australia as well. Sure, just put negatives. Shipping knives to Australia is expensive. Next, all the positives we got, like you know, how if you get cancer, you don't have to pay anything. The government fixes it for you. It's good. Like it's you know, we've got our pros and we've got our cons. Sorry about my little patriotic pro Australia motion, but it's uh, it's good. It's good here. It's it's one of the few things that isn't so good here is the. Um, is the shipping rates when you order things from, from our friends in America. So there you go. Um, the uh, bad list is really, really short on this one. Um, if you're happy to pay for a knife that is um, essentially quite a small fixed blade knife, um, then this, regardless of whether you get the A2 one or the CPM154 one or any other versions they do, I'd love to see it in M4, dudes, that'd be awesome. And I think Chris would as well. I think he's quite fond of that still too. Um, then I think you're gonna be completely happy with this knife. Um, there is nothing fundamentally wrong with it whatsoever. Take my experience, I guess, on board, as of course I'm sure you would, um, but really, in terms of the way it's put together, in terms of the way it's finished, and in terms, most importantly, of the design, it really is a winner, and it is really quite unique, as what I can see that you can get quite easily available out there in good steels with you know uh, this kind of profile. I think it is quite unique, and it's definitely something worth pulling the trigger on, I would suggest. And that's after a few months and a few adventures and a few mishaps with the blade. So I reckon you can take this one to the bank. All right guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.